by his grace we have seen today by his grace by the grace of God we are alive let's begin let's begin to thank the Lord begin to pray thank the Lord thank the Lord thank the Lord God is good God is merciful Lord we want to thank you this morning indeed you are good we thank you for loving us we thank you for your goodness and your mercy upon us we bless your holy name Lord you are good you are faithful Lord Oh, Lord, your promises are yes and amen, Lord. You never lie to us, oh, Lord. You never lie. You are a faithful God. We bless you. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This morning, we want to thank you on behalf of all our family members, Lord. We want to thank you on behalf of everyone, everyone. Lord Jesus, our friends, oh, Lord, our colleagues, our neighbors, everyone, Lord, the church and the church universal we want to thank you lord thank you so much the enemy has so many plans for your church but lord as you have said oh no weapon form against your church will ever prosper because you are a faithful god and you have spoken and that is what will be and that is what is going to happen and it will be it will be so till you come to take us to heaven nothing will ever stand against your church Oh, Lord, we want to bless you. We bless you. This morning, Lord, we thank you so, so, so much. We thank you for your spirit at work in us. We thank you for your spirit that leads us, oh, Lord, to do what we do. We thank you. Without your spirit, Father, there's nothing we are able to do. Thank you for the Holy Spirit at work in us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. You are good and your mercies endure forever. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanks we bless you lord we bless you this morning as we continue to pray we commit ourselves into your hands we commit uh, today's uh, uh, service into your hands lord we pray that the holy spirit will lead us oh sweet spirit sweet spirit we rely on you we depend on you we can't do it without you spirit of the living God, our leader, our teacher, our comforter, our sustainer, our guide, our reminder, our provider, our protector. You are everything, all in all. Holy Spirit, we rely on you. We rely on you. Come upon us in a very special way. Come on up upon us in a very special way. Lord, Holy Spirit, flood this place, flood this place, flood this place. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. Mandele makuri behind Brenda le mazunda la bazuki tanda ya baba le katana bori andalia le mazuka tanda la baba oh Jesus mandele le mozika tanda baba mandele le mozika tanda la baba di kala baba ri andele mazuka tanda in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we are praying committing uh, uh, the worship the praise and the word that comes to us into into the hands of the Lord we pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us he will speak to us he will lead us in everything we do this morning we commit everything into his hands into his care spirit of the living God move in your own direction move in your own way we cannot restrict you we cannot and we don't even want to restrict you and so Lord Jesus we are flexible in your hands and we pray that Lord you will move through us in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there is a redeemer Jesus God on sun precious lamb of God Messiah
want to zoom and go to the presence of the living God, the one who is risen. He is risen. He is seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. And so this morning, if we have come to his presence, if we are here, oh, we will go in our spirit, in our spirit to his presence. We will go and join the host of uh, uh, angels to worship him. We will go and bow before him at his feet and his presence to say glory, glory, glory to him. Honor, adoration, worship to him. This morning, just begin to worship the Lord. Open in your mouth and begin to give all glory to him. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. He's no more in the grave. He is alive. All power, all power in heaven and on earth has given to him, has been given to him, has been given to him. He is a king of kings and the Lord of God. He is a young God, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. There is no one like him. There is no one like him. Oh, Oh Lord, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. Yes, you said to your disciples that you will rise again. Oh Lord, and on the third day, yes, you came back to life. You came back to life, Lord. 
We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. You are God. Indeed, you are God. Indeed, you are God. You are God. We don't need anyone to tell us, oh Lord. We don't need anyone to tell us who you are. Oh, we have tested and trusted and said, oh Lord. Indeed, you are God. Indeed, you are God. You are sovereign. You are mighty. We worship you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. We worship you, Lord. Mandala le bozakaya, mahanda le branda, ianda le basuka tande. You are worthy. We are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Jesus. We give you all the glory.
are you, Lord? Worthy, worthy, Mahama, Mahama. Worthy, Lord. Worthy, 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 worthy. Malala Bosi Kayaba. Masuki Tara Bruna Laba. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name, Jesus, Lamb of God, This morning, there is no one like you, Lord. Mm. There is no one like you. Yes, we can testify that there is no one like you, our God. And so this morning, Lord, we want to give all worship, all praise, all honor, 
all adoration, all glory, all power, all majesty to you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To you, our second coming King. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful in all your dealings, Lord. You are faithful. And that is why, Lord, we can wait patiently, patiently until you come to take us to heaven. We can wait because we know you never lied. And all that you have said concerning yourself is true. And therefore, Lord, this morning, we thank you. We thank you so much. We thank you, Lord, for calling us your children. We thank you that we are your children. We thank you that, Lord, one day, one day, we will see you face to face. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless you. Mm -hmm. We bless you. Nothing can be compared to this. Mm -hmm. Father, this is our inheritance. And we are so proud. Mm -hmm. We are bold. We are confident, oh, Lord. Masuki mm taya -hmm. Have your way, Lord, this morning, and let your glory alone be seen. We reverend you, Lord, this morning, and we salute you. We salute you. We salute you. Have your way, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. To our King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. The one who death could not take him bound. Hallelujah. We are alive because he is alive. Today is Gospel Sunday, and today is the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. Amen. And therefore, we are going to learn just a short song and a song of victory to sing. And praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It goes like this. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Oh. Can we have the words? Hallelujah. Eh. Is the song of victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Eh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. Okay? Media, can you help us, please? Great. So, hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Please hold on. Hallelujah, eh. Is the sound of victory. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. So let's go, let's go. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, eh. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. Again, let's go. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Hallelujah, eh. It's the sound of victory. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. And another one goes like, He has stand for me. What no man will do. Hallelujah, eh. Is the sound of freedom. He's giving us freedom. Hallelujah, eh. Hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this sound. He has done for me. Let's go. He has done for me what no man has done. Hallelujah, eh. 
song. Amen. Are we ready? Okay. So let's go like that. Your name, I'm the 
confession of your name.
Amen. Fountain of praise, God bless you so, so much. God bless you so much. God is good. And all the time. Today we have a special package. But um, pastor will give you uh, more details. It's an emeritus service. So we have the seniors and the emeritus. But before then, we have our dear brother William. Um, William in cancer. William is going to give us administration. And then after that, our dear pastor will give us details as to what is going to happen. Amen. Helia. I want to thank God for adding another year to my year. It was this month, and I can't let it go without saying something to him. He paid the debt. He did not own a own a debt. I could not pay, and I needed someone to wash my sins away. Oh, now I can sing this brand new song, Amazing Grace. Because Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Oh, he paid a debt, he paid a debt, he did not talk. Oh, I own a debt, I could not pay. And I need a someone oh, to wash my sins away. Oh, now I can sing, now I can sing. Oh, this brand new song, amazing grace. Because Jesus paid a debt, but I could never pay. Oh, now I can sing, now I can sing. Now I can sing. Brand new song, oh amazing grace, because Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Hallelujah! Oh, you have won the victory. I give you all the praise.
Let's put our hands together. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And so, we always know our brother as the dancing man. Right? We always know him as the dancing man. We never know that he's a singing man as well. So God bless you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Oh, what a joy. What a joy in the house of the Lord. And beloved, today, as we know, is a Gospel Sunday. And we had a twist to it to say Gospel Sunday in celebrating that with our seniors. So it's not an award-giving ceremony day, no. But it's a moment for old and young to know and to understand that the gospel thrives in all generations. And so I want to ask the Sunday school um, to wait a little while. You please pay attention to what is going to happen in the next few minutes. And just so that we'll be able to tap into their stories of salvation how the Lord delivered them, how they have walked with the Lord, some over 20 years, some 30 and all that. And so that if you are young as I am and you have Jesus today, count it as a blessing that you will count many years of knowing the Lord. You count many years of knowing the Lord. You count many years of knowing the Lord. And so since we're reflecting on, you know, the belt of truth, truth holding everything, Jesus being the truth, reflecting on today as... Um, I'm just doing this so that the media guys will be ready, right? I put a microphone on. There's a little clip um, that we're going to show. I want the Sunday school, everybody to sit. Please don't go now, the youth, everyone, to sit for this clip that we're going to show. And so that we will take lessons from and um, before um, Elder Thomas um, Williams and uh, come to share as one of the senior citizens as well, former presiding elder, to share with us, you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Colossians 1 I'm reading down. Paul said, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. And he said, grace and peace to you from God, our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people. And so look at Paul writing, there's a joy in his spirit when he's praying for the church in Colossae because he has heard that the faith did not die. The gospel they received did not die. They are growing, they are flourishing, they are enjoying Jesus. And so when he goes down on his knees and he's praying for them, there is excitement and joy in his spirit. And that's what he said. And he said, the faith and love, so he's explaining the faith and love that brings from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard the true message of the gospel, the true message of the gospel, non-adulterated word of the gospel. It gives us hope of eternal life, hope of eternity. So when mommy was leading, it was mentioned, Lord, we are waiting for you. In fact, if you are a child of God, that should be your thought. Maranatha, Lord, come. If you are not be able to call for him to come, it means, in fact, if he comes now, you might be in danger might be in danger. And so the gospel, the true message of the gospel, Paul is saying, that which you receive, you have kept it. Friends, as we know, one of our armors is that we have the armor of the belt of truth. It holds everything. If you don't have the truth on, you know, your trousers will begin to fall. You can't step out. You can't step out to proclaim that you are righteous. You can't step out to proclaim that, you know, you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. We need the gospel of the message of truth. And that is what we're going to do and today. He said, that came to you in the same way. The gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world. Throughout the whole world. So it is not only in Fountain Gate, Pierre, the Bruce District. Throughout the whole world, the gospel is bearing fruit everywhere. In difficulties, in challenges, in joy. As the message is being proclaimed, it is bearing fruit. Hallelujah. And then he says finally that, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it. And that is what gave me the joy. So when we watch the clip, you understand. Since the day they heard the message and then they, they gave their life to Jesus. Since the day they heard the message, they have been no looking back, but only looking unto God, the author 
and the finisher of our faith. And he said, just as it has been doing amongst you since the day you heard it, and truly understood God's grace. And so, as we were thinking through um, 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 all that, of course, we have many seniors here, but for, for want of time and all that, um, the media team and the seniors they put a, a few clips or a short clip together. I want us to really, please, with the children inclusive, let's pay very good attention. And when, as soon as the clip is over, our papa, senior citizen, Elder Williams, will share with us. And I'll come back as we pray together. Beloved, the gospel works. The message of the gospel, it works. It works. I'm telling you, it works. It knows no expiry date. Once you receive it, it works. It works. And today I pray that the Lord will touch your heart and your spirit as we hear them and listen to them. So media team, please let it go for me now. Thank you. I was born in Manchester and my father, I actually don't know him, I wasn't brought up with him, but my Irish mother brought me up as a Catholic and forced me to go to church every Sunday. I went to convent school and was brought up by nuns, taught by the nuns there. And I knew about God, but I didn't know him personally. I would stand up in the chapel and read the Bible and it was just like narrating Bar Bar Black Sheep or nursery rhymes to me. I was a party girl in my teens and I married very young and had two children. I married a DJ so I was always with music and dancing and I liked life very well. And as I said, I knew about God but I didn't have any relationship with him. And I drank. I've never smoked, but I like to drink, and I could drink very well. I was a bad boy. I did all the things that small children and the rest do. I'll do it very quickly. School, we just used to go to people's farms, pluck oranges, corn, and the rest, and put them in our clothes and the rest, and we said, Evil will not affect us because we have uh, the school clothes. But those, all those things were lies. Another bit is that I was involved with people who were a little bit older than me. And the things that they were doing, I had to copy or they would force me to do it. So one thing I've realized is that the company that you, you keep really does affect you. And so through that, I was in a, a, a Christian uh, school, the Methodist. I didn't start with Pentecost. Uh, I was going to church on Sundays and uh, we were actually forced, compulsory, because if you don't, you became. I was doing that, but I didn't know the Lord. I went through that for a long period until I finished my uh, elementary uh, education and the rest and attended secondary school. Praise the Lord. First of all, I have to say that I come from Colombia. I grew up in a, in a big family and all men, all boys. And I had to learn how to fight, how to kick, uh, how really my, my, my childhood, it wasn't very easy, but uh, send me to God. When I was seven years old, somebody told me about Jesus Christ, and I said, Jesus Christ. I was seven years old, and uh, I started to go to church, but I saw in that church so much injustice that I ran away from that church because in, but that time I really, they teach you that if you don't do this, you do, do that, the Lord will kill you. And I was in a, such a fear 
that every day I pray to the Lord, that, Lord, you know everything. If you know that I'm going to get away from your ways, kill me. But I ran from the church. I didn't want to know nothing about the God, about it. nothing else. Yes. And I carry on as a little girl doing the thing that girls do, behaving badly because I was bad. I was born with Christian grandparents who took care of us. They teach us, you know, they pray with us. They ask you to go to Sunday school, you know, force, a child, you know, force. But thank God, you know, it came to a time that I, I accepted Christ myself. No one was forcing me. And I accept Christ. I told Christ, yes, come into my heart and come and live. And to be honest, it was not an easy journey. You know, you're one in the world, you know, but always because I have given myself to Christ, you know, he was good to me. You know, he, he guides me, you know, because I said, come into my heart and come and stay because I love you. You first loved me. And also, if uh, I go into uh, Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Therefore, because I have told Christ, come into my heart, no matter what, Christ came and I love him so much. And he guided me, though I wasn't a good child. I was so <laughs> quick-tempered, I can fight anywhere, don't step on my toe. But gradually, when I received Christ, then my, my character came down. You know, young children in the world, you know, sometimes you'll be naughty, but immediately you, you are naughty and you realize, you know, you feel guilty, then you have to go and pray. That's what I was taught. Because where I started going to pray, it's evangelical. So, you know, you can't just, you know, walk anyhow that if you said you have accepted Christ. So to be honest, it was hard. All these pieces broken and scattered. One day, I was accused that I committed a crime, and I was arrested and I put in a cell. So all that hate, and I grew up with hate, with hate, revenge. It was miserable. I was broken mentally, physical, and spiritual. One day, I was playing with the TV control, and I found a channel, and the preacher that was the person that was talking me said, you that are sit down there, that feel so miserable, self-pity, you need Jesus Christ. You need to accept Jesus Christ. Come back to the first love that you had for him before. In that moment, I kneeled down because I knew that it was God that's talking to me. And kneeled down, and I repent, and I say Jesus Christ again. It wasn't easy because my heart, I was being hurt so much that I didn't want to know. I stay at home. I didn't want to find a church because of the past thing that I, I saw. Until one day, again, the same pastor and TV say, you had to find a church. God, did, God didn't create you to be an island, alone. You have to go and find a church where they teach you God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Bible, the Word of God. Okay, one Saturday I came for no reason. I came to Dagenham to do some shopping. And I saw a lot of people coming to that church, from that church. And I was shaking like a leaf. I couldn't eat like if somebody was pushing me to come to that church. And I asked to one of the men here in, in the door, that was in the door, and I said, this is a Christian church. Do you teach God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? And he said, yes. And he said, and the word of God is the first that you teach here. And he asked for my telephone number, and he gave it to the pastor. 
this afternoon, the pasta for me. And I said, would you like to come tomorrow? Sunday, I say, no, 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 son, no, no, tomorrow. The next Sunday I will be there. And since then, I have been here. It wasn't very easy because my heart was full of hate. I wanted revenge. I wanted that that person that has hurt me. I be being innocent because you, all that I, I was thinking, I am good, that I good. How does that happen to me? Was asking God, why you allow that that happen to me? Okay, the time passed and the Lord was building me up little by little until one day I saw this person that had done so much to me, so much damage in my life for my children, for my husband, that I went in life, a, a force was pushing me and I went to embrace this person and I say, you know, I love you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I love you. And that person, he was so surprised. And in that moment, it like the peace and the joy come to my heart. And all the problems had disappeared. When I was in St. Catherine School, I started hearing about the gospel being preached in a different way by the scripture union. And I thank God for the scripture union. It was probably my second to third year in secondary school that I said I wanted to go and hear and what they were saying. And there was a man who is still alive called Wilson Awasu. Uh, he's a doctor now in the States who came to speak to the Scripture Union on Wednesdays. And so through that, I examined my life and the rest, and I realized that, you know, I was just going about doing things as I wanted, but it was not right. It was not the will of God. I wasn't doing that. So I was determined then to give my life to Jesus Christ and start all afresh because all that I was doing, it probably looked nice and the rest in the sight of men, but it didn't please God. And I saw a great change. I was yearning for more of fellowship, loving people genuinely, and really desiring to do what was good, not in the sight of men, but pleasing the Lord. And that is how I did it until I finished. And uh, I became the president of the scripture union in my school, in my sixth form, the final year, uh, which was very good. I was really protecting people who were walking astray and all the rest and preaching the word of God to them. So, after that, I had a job in uh, one of the banks in Ghana called Ghana Commercial Bank. I worked there as an assistant uh, accountant before I applied to come to the UK. All during that time, I was really seeking, yearning to know the Lord more and more. And the Lord didn't fail me. I moved to London in the 80s and um, married again, but brought my two children with me from my first marriage. And we liked life, we liked to party. And it was my husband's intention to run um, a beer bar, a spot as he calls it, in Ghana. And I was going with him. So in order to pay the mortgage, my husband brought um, a young Ghanaian lady to live with me and she was a Church of Pentecost member. So whilst I was in my room with my beer, she was above my head in her room, praying in tongues, shouting. And I used to think, is she fighting with somebody on the phone or what? I didn't understand. Until one day she said, 
mommy, I'd like to, she called me mommy, and I like that. I said, mommy, I'd like to take the small children to um, the seaside. My church are having um, a seaside trip, and you are welcome to come if you want. She never preached Christ to me, but that's how she put it. So I thought, mm, yeah, good. I said, yeah, how much is it, I asked her. She said, oh, it's free. I said, oh, what do I have to bring? She said, nothing. The church will cook and do everything, and I like the idea. So I packed my bag for the seaside, some worldly book, not a Bible, some Heineken beers for me, four pack, some juice for the children, and um, nothing else, a towel to lie down on the beach. To me, everything was worldly, nothing to do with church, even though the church were paying for me to go to the seaside. It was just a trip to the seaside as far as I was concerned. So we got to Clapham South because I live in, in Mitcham in Surrey. So the nearest Church of Pentecost where my big daughter, I call her now Nana, was, was uh, fellowshipping, we went there to collect the coach to go to Brighton that day, the day I gave my life to Jesus. So when I reached there, all these women were hugging me, men were greeting me, the children straight away were taken off somewhere, and I felt loved. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. I felt loved because all my family were in Manchester. I only had my husband here and my children. So I suddenly made all these friends and everybody was calling me mummy or sister or auntie and I really felt the love. So we sat on the coach and then before the coach moved, <laughs> a deaconess stood up and said, let's pray. Before we move the coach, we have to pray. And it was like a strange word to me. And everything she said, everything she said made sense. We are going to the seaside. Let's pray for traveling mercies, that nothing will happen on the way. And we prayed. I watched the people pray and I didn't pray. When they said amen, I said amen. Then she said, let's pray for the protection of the children. God has given us these children. And there are many people at the seaside who are going there with bad intention, but we are going there for a purpose. So let's pray for the purpose that we are going to the seaside and that the Lord will protect our children. And I said, yes, that makes sense. And then the Holy Spirit started to minister to me. How ungrateful I was. I had these beautiful children and I'd never thank God for them. The Holy Spirit sat next to me. <laughs> Everybody had somebody sitting next to them, but nobody sat next to me except the Holy Spirit. He was talking in my ear all the way from Balaam to Brighton. The Holy Spirit was talking to me about how ungrateful I was and the tears which are falling now were falling and how the Lord had a different plan for me. That the beer bar I was going to do in Ghana was not a good idea. So many things he was talking to me about. So when we reached Brighton, it was, I can remember, Elder Adamia Santi. He gave an altar call. And when he said, if you know the Lord is talking to you today and you want to give your life to Jesus, come forward. And I ran. And I couldn't understand why everybody else <laughs> wasn't running but they'd already given themselves to Jesus. That whole money for that trip to Brighton was for me. Jesus arranged everything for me. I gave my life to Christ. I left my four beers on the beach that day and I don't need alcohol again. That was 22 years ago when I was 44. 
I'm in the senior citizens now. I've never not gone to the Church of Pentecost since that day. That was Saturday, 23rd of July, 2001. And then when I went home, my husband, who was about to go to Ghana, we'd already packed some things to start this beer bar. He asked me, how was your trip to the seaside? And like the Samaritan woman, I said, it was great. And I met a man who told me everything about my life. And tomorrow I'm going to church with Nana, who lived above. And don't try to stop me. And don't try to make me choose between me and this man Jesus that I met today. Otherwise you may be disappointed. And I don't speak to my husband like that, but that's what I did to him that day. And he just stepped back on me and he said, okay. And in the morning, when I got up, white cloth, he pressed the white cloth for me, got the children's clothes ready, everything ready for me. And I asked him to come with me and he said no. He said he was still going to Ghana to make that beer bar, even though I said I wasn't going. And he went. And I prayed to God. I said, Jesus, I don't want to lose my husband, but I've gained you now. So what do I do? And he said, choose me and you'll always have your husband and me. Choose your husband and you may lose me and the eternal life that I have for you. So I chose Jesus. I'm someone, it says Christ saved me. Always I want to be where Christ is being taught or Christ is being preached or where Christ's children are. So by, by so doing, you know, a, a lot of people in the uh, church, sometimes they will come, oh, the Lord said I should pray for you. So I'm always receiving prayers from people. So that kept me and gave me more love for Christ. And that is, that is what, by God's grace, I have been doing and I thank God. When I, I reach a, a time to marry, God also gave me someone that also loved Christ so we can walk together. And through that, I thank God I'm still holding on him. No matter what, I have gone through so many things, but by his grace, I'm still living. Even when I was meant to die, I didn't die. He saved me up to now. And still his love has enveloped me. And I thank God so much that he saved me at the right time. And since he saved me, I haven't looked back. Though I haven't been so good, but still he knows, he knows our flame. Therefore, it's always, the hand is always upon me. Up to this time, that I think <laughs> I, I, I'm his senior citizen now. It's God who has done it, not by my good deeds, no, but by the grace of God. Because there's nothing that I will, I will pray for. If it takes time at all, God always answer my prayers. So I thank God so much how he has brought me so far and I love him so much. By God's grace, him studying me, I was really focused on doing what was right. Even though at times I will fall, but God in his goodness will lift me up. So my, my life is, has been wretched, but God has been faithful. And that is a good thing about God, that I met my wife and then we got married. And by grace, by his grace, uh, together we decided to come close to God and we joined the Ghana Christian Fellowship and then the African Christian Fellowship. And uh, through that, we were serving God in the way that we could. Every time that we had a time and they were having a meeting, we attended. And it's true that, that I met other people who had come from Ghana with the Pentecostal Foundation, and we were talking about how we can really make, you know, the Pentecost uh, in this country or form it. And so I was very involved with the church, the Elim Church in Elford uh, around 82 when we came to where we are we decided 
that some should form should uh, inform uh, the leadership in Ghana that an association will be formed. I didn't involve myself then because I decided with one Mr. Appiah, now Professor Reverend Appiah, that he should take the lead whilst I, I, I will stay with Elim. If not, they will think that we are all leaving. So that is how the whole thing came. And then we formed this house fellowship and then the park and uh, then God knows what he has done through all those things. So where we are is all by grace. So life has not been easy, but I thank God for his love, his goodness, his kindness, and his faithfulness, because I have fallen down in various places and the rest. I regret and come back to him and all the rest, and he forgives and then straightens me up. And that is what has made me what I am at the moment. My husband went to Ghana. He made the spot. It never prospered. He turned it to a printing which prospered. He became an Ashanti chief in Ghana. And he comes and he goes. And one day when he came, I was cleaning fish in the kitchen and he was at my back. And Nana who lived with me was there. And just like the story of Nicodemus, he asked, this born again you talk about, what does it mean? And I was still in the kitchen cleaning fish with my back to him. Then I told him that if you want to give your life to Jesus, you just have to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and confess with your mouth that he is the Son of God. Repent that you're a sinner and turn away from all the evil things you have done and he will come into your heart. He will forgive you and your life will never be the same. If you like, raise your hand up now and say this prayer with me. And as I prayed the prayer, I didn't see my husband raise his hands and, and give his life to Jesus. But just as I did at the seaside, he did the same. My, and I give God glory. It was Nana who lived with me who was shouting and hugging Daddy. And I was still there cleaning the fish. I didn't even know what happened. But that's how God is. He would use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Never give up and be patient. And it was the love of God. And one thing that I can say, the God cannot work in, in us if there is unforgiveness, if we are hate, lies in our lives. We have to be straight, get straight, right with God. That is I can say. That is my testimony. And since then I have been in this church and I receive love and I see the love. I have the, the, the unity as well. I know that I am not perfect because in our own righteousness, we are not. But he is in charge of my life and send me to go my husband, my kids, and the like Jesus Christ. And my family, many brothers in Colombia, si sister in law, niece and nephew, they are serving the Lord. And not only that, people that I have told him, one thing that I say as a Christian, please, we don't give up in our family. We don't give up in our enemies. We go, the world goes say, pray for our enemies. Pray, pray for the people around you for your country, for everyone. I went to the beach with my beer in my bag, my towel to lie on, just to lie in the beach and get some sunshine. But the Lord had a different plan for me. That very day I got baptized. It's not usual because normally you have to go through some teachings. But at age 44, I was ready for my journey with Jesus. And the, the beach towel that I wanted to lie and soak some sun up was the beach towel I used to get baptized that day, 22 years ago, and I haven't looked back. That party girl I was, I still like to dance, I still love to enjoy, but the spirit that I drink now is the Holy Spirit. I don't need alcohol. I don't need the things of the world. They're useless, they're all vanity, they are meaningless. 
because I'm sure of the eternal life that I have with my Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory. His truth is much. Sing with me. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. your holy name this wonderful morning we want to glorify you for who you are for what you have done for what you have made there is no one like you in heaven and on earth thank you for giving us the strength this morning to gather your sins together to hear your word Father, a week ago today, the world witnessed the most astounding cosmic event. Hallelujah. That event changed everything forever. It became the crossroad of life and death for us all. And because you rose from the dead and you still live, your promise of redemption and eternal life is still very true. You are the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of gods, and the light of light. Through you, we can now boldly approach the throne of Greece with confidence. And Father, we thank you that you have gathered at your feet this afternoon to glorify your holy name. May your word, your word which is living and active, which doesn't return to you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which you send it. May this word reach the deep recesses of our hearts and bring illumination revelation and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Senior citizens. <laughs> you have traveled far. Yes. Uh, I will slot in a short history. I've just written it. About three or five minutes. To tell you about how we came in here. Here. This very cozy place where you are enjoying. Yes. But I, 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 I will do that later on. At this juncture, I just want to thank God 
was speaking through our chief servant and uh, Mama Ivy to choose me to deliver the gospel message. Hallelujah. It's been a long time. In fact, I, I feel like falling here. <laughs> and, you know, the Bible defines gospel simply as the good news or the message of Christianity. That is how my Bible explains it. I don't want to go to my dictionary, which you'll be very angry with or you'll be jealous, very jealous with. So thank you, Santa. I call my pastor Santa because we belong to a certain school in Ghana. That place, when you go, the Spirit of the, I mean, the Holy Spirit enters you. So we call ourselves Santa. Hallelujah. Thank you for making me a, a harbinger of good news. Yes, I thank God that I don't belong to the company of old prophets who were sent to go and deliver bad news. And they ended being beaten up and uh, praying some type of prayer. I, I can remember that prayer of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 20 to 23. When you read that one, you wouldn't think that a child of God who prayed that prayer against his enemy. But I thank God for Jesus Christ. Because in uh, Matthew 5, 44, he tells you that you should pray for your enemy. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, I thank you. You have given me this, your podium, and it's just by the grace of God that I am standing here. We thank him for everything. Hallelujah. You can all testify how we were blessed last week with the messages that went on. Elder Augustine Najima started on Palm Sunday, gave us the truth about the word, followed by Joel on Wednesday, that is on the surgery, during the surgery time. Then Elder Chris on Wednesday evening. I remember Apostle Apia Thursday, and I remember our dear pastor on Friday, then Reverend Arthur on Thursday, Apostle on Saturday. No, no, Apostle Seusu, Easter Sunday, yes. And uh, I was so impressed, not impressed at just as such, but the comment about the challenges women face in Old Testament times after bringing forth uh, Apostle uh, Re Reverend Arthur's message made me laugh to tears. I didn't know that women had to go through such purification ceremonies. But thanks to Jesus Christ, he came to die on the cross to stop all this. So it is true that there is everything good in the day we refer to as Good Friday. This is what uh, Pastor Arthur ended up with. You know, all the mysteries of the word were revealed to us during that week. You know, God has his way of revealing things to his people. And I thank the Lord so much. Well, it's only a week ago since the celebration of Jesus' resurrected. Uh, I mean, Jesus' resurrection. Just seven days ago. So Jesus has how many days more? 33 days to hover around the world before he ascends into heaven. My assignment is to deliver the gospel message. The gospel message is all about the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death. And we know that there are so many ways or different approaches one might choose to proclaim the gospel. So many ways. But for my theme, I want to be as simple and as brief as possible. And so I have purposed to concentrate on how valued and how relevant the resurrection of Christ is to us. For that reason, I have framed my theme in a question, which is, Jesus rose from the dead, so what? Last week, Apostle was asking you a question, is the resurrection, 
is the what the revelation true? But this uh, this morning, this is my theme. Jesus rose from the dead. So what? I gave an answer. So everything to a skeptic who met me last Sunday when I was leaving the church. He came to me and asked, so Jesus Christ is risen. So what? And I looked at him. And I know he was in, in, in I mean, he was in, he, he was tipsy somehow. So he wanted to take me on. So I answered the question, so everything. Hallelujah. And uh, he was following me to ask me more questions. I said, so everything. So he left. I knew if I had given him a chance, he would have wasted my time. Because whatever you say, he would just look at you. He's just boost, and so nothing will go into his head. Right. And indeed, Jesus rose from the dead. My text is taken from Mark 16, verse 7. Just short. But go tell his disciples and Peter, He's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Please, I want you to take these two simple words. And Peter, in NLT, is including Peter. Just take these two words and keep, because I will come to it very soon. Now, the, these two words are very, very important because they reveal the saving grace of Jesus Christ upon us. And that gives us all the great hope that we cherish. And Peter, now let me stop here and go to the history. And I salute you all, men and women of this church. It's been 22 years since Fountain Gate started with a bang. In 2002, Hunting Gate Tabernacle was officially commissioned by the National Executive of COP. In fact, a representative is sitting down here right now, Eldo Kwe. Hallelujah. If you go outside there, you see a plaque there, and it, it tells us when it was commissioned. Two years before the commissioning, the first English assembly had already settled in this promised tabernacle two years before the commission. The members had started a long journey from uh, Hackney. I mean, the first English service, the first English assembly. It had started from Shoreditch, uh, sorry, Hackney. And they traveled all the way through Shoreditch to this place. Special mention to be made of Characters like Tony Dakwa, who is with the Lord at this moment. He was the first presiding elder in Hackney. Then he was succeeded by uh, the Dampari, who is sitting down here at this very moment. You will see him very soon. Hallelujah. And then uh, the Dampari was also succeeded by Elder Mensa. And the lobby came briefly after Elder Mensa, before I also came in. It is here we met our first resident missionary in the person of Apostle Amadache. He was then a pastor. Before then, there had been two ministers who had functioned as leaders, Pastor Blankson and Apostle Sapo. In fact, they hadn't made the attempt to have a, an English assembly at the time. So Pastor Amegache formed the first executive members of six elders to begin the business in God's kingdom. Please, if you have the picture there, can you project it for us to see those six members? Hallelujah. This is a character now lecturing in one of our universities in Ghana. It's called Elder Atapeni. This one is called Elder Atu Hoxin. He comes all the way from Slough. This is me. 
This is Elder Mensa. This is Eldando, who is now in Ghana. This one has left the church, and that's the man. The one we call Elder Dapolo. He's sitting down here. Please give a clap of applause to him. There were other elders. Elder Kofi was here. We had Samiadu, Elder Stobart, Steve Stum, Sam Korte, Amwa, Elder Kapu, Dua, Kunacho, and later Kamez. But I won't forget our women. Mama Dani was the first national women's leader who took over from Mama Tina. Mama Tina in him, whose son is an elder sitting down there. Hallelujah. I wouldn't bore you with the initial challenges we had when we came here at first. We can't refer to those days as good old days. No, not at all. We would come there. The, the whole place was in, in shambles. And the Dampari will have some small, uh, a small guitar there. And then there will be one of these bongos. And the journey will, will, will be the uh, chorus leader at, that, at the beginning. We will sit in the cold there for three hours because the church was, to, this building was to be developed. It was not easy. But then the zeal, the enthusiasm, and the commitment, and the dedication they exhibited in helping to expand God's kingdom by establishing other assemblies. In fact, this church has established Halo Assembly, Colchester Assembly, South London Sea, Milton Keynes, Grace, and Slough. Added to it was the, or is still the evening service. That came out of, the, out of the morning service because there were so many people who didn't have the chance to come in the morning. So Apostle uh, Crunchy decided to let's have the evening service. And then the weekly preaching assignment to these areas at the initial stages, so difficult. You would have to wake up in the morning on a Sunday morning, travel all the way to Slough to go and preach. Travel all the way to Milton Keynes to go and preach. Travel all the way to Southern and Sea. And sometimes before we come, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening. You rise up in the morning and you go. All because you want God's church to grow. Hallelujah. In fact, at that time, the presiding elder and the women's leadership the challenges were so many because the presiding elder and the women's leader, the local leader, had to take initiative of funerals, not actually burying, but funerals you have to attend, naming you have to attend, other visitations. And there were so many dedicated people who would wake up on a Saturday morning, move out, check all these things. If somebody was sick, we would have to go. And it wasn't easy. I remember one of the days, it was... Our children were so angry with us. One day I came, my boy, my first boy looked at me and said, Daddy, when I'm 16 years, I will leave the house. And I, said, I just told him, what do you mean? He said, but where do you go out weekends? We don't see you. By the time you come, they are asleep. And that wasn't easy. But we thank God everything is in order now. God is good. He, he, he cherishes his children. Right? So... There were so many dedicated deacons and deaconesses then. And now, a special mention should be made of Sister Nancy. Sister Rosie Kane was spending her own money to buy Christmas, uh, birthday cards every time for a whole year. <laughs> Just to allow people to celebrate their birthdays. It was doing it and then we felt that we have to Give her something, even if she didn't want to take it. And kudos to the second assembly. The English members, the dignitaries who later joined from south. Elder Jominta was there, not then, not elder at that time. But Mama Nobi, Mama Pat, Mama Teresa, they all joined the locals here. Sister Jackie, Sister Florence Simpson, Jean Dakwa, Sister Nancy and Sister Joyce Dampari, she is also here. Mama Nancy is also here, still. And we don't forget our members. Our Sister Vic Nkrumah is there. Sister Bertha is there. We remember Sister Grace who has joined 
her ancestors in paradise. Sister Grace Butler. And then we remember Esther Bar, Mama Coca, Mama Rosalind Thomas, Mama Bonso, Pella Kufat, and others. In fact, I don't want to mention all of them. But through it all, God proved himself faithful. And we rejoice to see how far he has built his church. Look at this church, so beautiful. It wasn't so those days. But we stood. I remember sometimes we didn't even have the heaters there. Sometimes you come, the heaters were not functioning. And Elder would be playing the, uh, the guitar. And then my hands would be on the, either, either myself or Elder Johnny. You, by the time you finish, your hands here are red like that. But we took it like that because we wanted to see God's kingdom expanding. Hallelujah. Now I will go back quickly and finish the message. And may I humbly ask you, my congregation, some questions on the faith we profess before I continue with the message. I just want to ask you some questions because what I'm going to say, you may agree or disagree. And I want to tackle those points because it's a gospel Sunday. Now, if you answer to any of these questions in negative, please just keep quiet. If, on the other hand, you answer in the affirmative, just let me hear yes. That's good. Now, I believe, I believe strongly. I believe that I am speaking to believers. Believers who have faith in Christ as he is revealed in the gospel message. Yes or no? I believe I am speaking to believers whose faith in Christ is bound to God's word. Yes or no? Thank you. Question three. I believe I am speaking to believers who submit to the Christ of the Bible as Lord and Savior. Yes. Good. Question number four. I believe I'm speaking to believers who submit without reservation to the authority of the word of God. Yes or no? Question number five. I believe I'm speaking to believers who hold firmly to the Bible's teaching, who trust the Bible's promises, and heed the Bible's warnings. Yes or no? Nobody is saying no. Question number six. I believe I am speaking to believers who follow the Bible's commands and choose to remain in God's kingdom despite all the trials and challenges that are experienced. Yes or no? You have had so many bitter experiences. You have had it rough. You are still having it. But yet, your belief is there. Hallelujah. Finally, I believe I'm speaking to believers who have tested and trusted and tried the promises of God and found them credible. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, to you, the gospel message is more meaningful. And it is to you, Apostle Paul is reminding us about the truth in the gospel message. Apostle Paul is telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. Uh, Zainab, if you are there, please come and read it for me. And please pay attention. All of you who have said yes, please listen to this word of apostle. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 7. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 7. I'm reading from the NIV. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you. Please pay attention. 
which you receive and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you. As of first importance, that Christ died for our sins. That Christ died for our sins. According to scriptures. According to scriptures. That he was buried. That he was buried. And he was raised. And he was raised on the third day. On the third day, according to scriptures. According to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James. Then to all the apostles. Amen. Amen. If you have answered yes to all of this, these verses reveal the good news of Christ's resurrection. And I'm sure that you trust this. I'm sure that you trust its validity. However, there are some of us here who are doubters, who are skeptics, who are, may I call them nominal Christians, who do not accept all what we believe in. Maybe some of you are sitting there saying not, no, to the questions I've asked you. To you also, I want to, I want to address and to challenge you to have a second thought of your Christian life. It is also good news for you. I know I am addressing some who are Christians, but have buts in their belief. I am referring to those who argue along this line. I am a Christian, but I don't believe all of the Bible. Is there anybody here like that? I'm a Christian, but I don't, be I don't believe all what the Bible says. Or, I am, a, I am a Christian, but I don't accept the Old Testament. Is there anybody here like that? Or, I am a Christian, but the God of the Old Testament is not the same as the God of the New Testament. Do I have anybody here like that? I am a Christian, but the God of the Old Testament is not the same as what I've just made mention of the New Testament. New Testament. And I am a Christian, but I am open-minded. There are so many skeptics who go to this view. I am open-minded. I am a Christian. I believe all religions lead to God. Is there anybody who believes in this? Finally, I am a Christian. I don't believe people rise up from dead. There's nobody here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Saints, the, the gospel message is clear. And it, it is the good news about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There's a song that we sing very often. For death could not hold him captive. Because even in the grave, he was Lord. Jesus opened his eyes on Easter day. He walked out of the grave with his heart beating, with his lung breathing. He defeated the power of sin and death, finally and forever. And through him, we have the victory. Through him, we have the victory. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ is this. Because he rose from the grave, so will you. That is, if you put your trust in him, yes, you, you too will live even though you die. Is this not good news? 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, in Christ, all will be made alive. Hallelujah. In Christ, you'll be made alive. Even though you die, you'll be made alive. Even though we have missed some of our people, they will be made alive. 
according to the word of God. Hallelujah. The good news, it is the most beautiful news we could ever hear in our lives. That is the good news that, we have, that Paul has relayed to us just some few minutes ago. It outweighs all the bad news we hear. In fact, the gospel message gives us peace here on earth and it fills us with assurance of eternal life so that we can know that when we close our eyes in death, we shall open them in heaven with Jesus Christ with us. Amen. And in fact, the gospel message is the best news in the world of bad news. That is how the gospel message is. And uh, I tell you, our world feels like it is tumbling down. The world we live in, it is filled with reasons to be afraid of your living in it. If you turn your radio on, if you scroll through the social media, what you will find, you will not like it. In fact, you will find numerous reasons to be anxious, to be fearful, and to be depressed. What are some of them? Look at COVID-19, the pandemic. Look at the effect that, is, uh, uh, that is, it has had on us. Talk of natural disasters. Natural disasters are labeled acts of God. I don't know where they got that expression. Do you hear of flooding, devastating wildfires? Do you hear of hurricanes? Do you hear of cyclones? Do you, have, do you hear of tornadoes? Do you hear of earthquakes? Do you hear of volcanic eruptions? Do you hear of landslides, mudslides? Knife and gun crime has become very common. Rumors of nuclear war, bombs in underground trains, mass murders by terrorists, use of nerve agents, by some political leaders to keep opponents. And most recently, the unprovoked, unprovoked battle in Ukraine. In fact, we don't know whether this will lead to Third World War. We don't even know whether there will be another COVID something, something. But God is our savior. Jesus Christ has risen up to save all of us in Jesus' name. Right. But I want you to know that there is no more important fact of history than the resurrection of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing more than that. Now, if I were to talk so much about these good things, I wouldn't live here. But people, there, there, there is an argument on the resurrection. There is an argument on the good news that we share. But in the past, People either accepted or rejected Christ's resurrection as a fact of history. Whether they accepted it or rejected it, it, it they, they would just say it. But in today's culture, people are apt to deny the resurrection and insist that people don't rise from the dead. That is the argument they make. People don't rise from the dead. Because apart from the man they discredit or the man they don't believe in, who people say he rose from the dead, they haven't seen other, any other person. But then, fortunately, the Bible answers that question. Hallelujah. Now, whatever be your stance on the resurrection, there are three strands of evidence which stubbornly refuse to go away. And I think I must let you know that. I must discuss them with you and then I stop. Three points. One, that tomb was empty on that Easter day. Two, Jesus Christ was seen alive. Hallelujah. And three, the disciples were transformed. These three evidences make the launching of the church possible. If we don't have these three evidences, where you are sitting here wouldn't be here at this time. Right. So I want to take a short time and explain these for us to know that there is good news in these three points. Right. Let me start with the explanation about the empty tomb. The resurrection. 
expression that we have, the empty tomb there. In fact, many people think that the story or whatever we have, the fact we have about the tomb is a fairy tale. When you speak to skeptics, that is what they will tell you. But the good news is in that very empty tomb. That is it. The good news is in that very empty tomb. The empty tomb has impacted every life it has touched. From the first witnesses in the first century to the witnesses of today, 21st century. That is what the tomb has affected us. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 15, 13 to 14, Paul writes, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. All what we are doing here, you are coming here, you are going out to evangelize, will be useless. And Paul says that if Christ had not been risen up, we would be the most pitiable. Hallelujah. It is Jesus who paid for our sins. And he didn't stop there. He, he conquered grave, the grave so that we could have eternal life with him. This is reason for celebrating Easter. Is this not good news? Hallelujah. That old hymn which tells us, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Is it not true? Because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. We have nothing to fear in life or death. Because in the end, we will rise like Jesus if we trust him and love him. Is this not good, good news enough for us? Now I want to tell you that that angel, he didn't roll that stone away to let Jesus out. He was not the one who rolled out the stone. Jesus had already left that place before he came in to roll it out. And he did it so that the woman who came in would see that it was an empty grave. Hallelujah. Without the resurrection, we would say that Jesus' crucifixion is nothing but martyrdom. You know the difference between martyrdom and crucifixion? A martyr can decide to say he's fighting for God, even in the course of fighting, if he dies, he knows he's going to heaven. This is the belief of a certain religion. Our, ours is not like that because Jesus comes down to look for us, to search for us, to cleanse us, and then to carry us to where he says he's preparing for us. Without the resurrection, Good Friday is meaningless. Without the resurrection, the death of Jesus Christ, it leaves us helpless, hopeless, and even depressed. There simply would have been no Christian community to uphold and proclaim the gospel over the past 20 centuries. This church has stood for the past 20 years, because uh, 20 centuries, because the one who died and arose said that he will build his church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Hallelujah. In fact, there wouldn't have been any credible explanation for the birth of the church if Jesus Christ had not resurrected. And there wouldn't have been the New Testament scripture to complete the Bible. If you want to know that Jesus Christ resurrected, look at the coward Peter before Jesus' death and compare him with the time in the Acts of the Apostles. Those times when he cowered, denying Jesus Christ. Now he had seen Jesus because he has resurrected. And so he's able to stand against the authorities and speak boldly. What has happened to him? In fact, our God is full of grace, mercy, and love. But he sent this Jesus Christ for a purpose, just to die on the cross, to pay the price for our sins, and then to make an offering once for all to secure our salvation. This is what Jesus Christ did for us. And that is the evidence of the tomb. The second evidence, Jesus was seen alive. 
Yes. He was seen alive. Along the road to Emmaus, there were the two disciples of Jesus Christ. Their names are not mentioned. But as they were walking, Jesus Christ met them. And they were sad. They were depressed. They were disappointed because they had attended the, God, uh, the, the, Sunday, the Palm Sunday celebration. They had risen up. They had said, Hosanna, Hosanna. And then on that Friday, something has happened. So they were so disappointed that their Lord had been crucified. This was the Lord they were waiting for. He was coming to conquer the Roman emperor. So they were pouring out their hearts to him. But Jesus in turn, when he, entered, when he joined them, he didn't reveal himself, but he made sure that he told them about what the scriptures say, that the Messiah had to come, the Messiah had to suffer, the Messiah had to die, the Messiah has to rise again. So when he has explained this to them and they reached their home, they invited him to a meal. Getting to their destination, they invited him. And when they invited Jesus, when they brought him in, into their house, everything changed. Hallelujah. Everything changed. And the sin is true today. It's true today. When you invite Jesus Christ, when you invite this resurrected Jesus Christ into your life as your only Lord and as your only Savior, he doesn't merely come in and take a seat. Yes, if I were working with somebody and they have read their home and I uh, have to at least accept what they are offering me, I'll go to their house, I will be a, a guest. But when Jesus Christ comes to your house, he takes over. Hallelujah. He's no longer the guest. He is rather the host. Amen. Is that not good news? Now, let me read Luke 24, 30, 31, what Jesus Christ did. When Jesus... The Bible says when he entered the house, he took bread, he broke it, and then gave it to them. And this is Jesus. I don't know where he got the bread and where he got whatever he wanted to give them. So this is who he is. And this is what I want us to do. And then when he gave it to them, hallelujah, he transformed them because they saw that he was Jesus Christ. And when he gave it to them and they saw that he was Jesus Christ, he disappeared. Hallelujah. This is Jesus Christ. He brings joy into your joyless circumstances. These people were so disappointed, so depressed because they had lost their man. So now he delivers you from whatever is holding you back from living in the light of his victories or his victorious resurrection. And this is good news. And once these disciples recognized the resurrected Jesus, they moved from fear to courage. They moved from pain to joy. They moved from despair to hope. Their misery was transformed into mission. They got up and headed back to Jerusalem. They had an important message to give. It was a mission. They had good news to deliver. They knew they must tell others what had happened. They had seen the risen Jesus with their own eyes. And they had walked with him. They had talked with him. They had dined with him. And he had ministered to them. Brethren, this is good news. When you walk with Jesus Christ, you will see it like that. He will dine with you. He will instruct you. He will direct you to do whatever you want to do. Hallelujah. Now, let me talk about the third evidence because time is already here. Right. The disciples were transformed. That's the last one. There are many testifying to the transformative power of Jesus Christ. Terrorists have changed. Criminals have changed. Academicals, I mean academics, who have always been arguing against the resurrection, they have changed. 
But I want to tell you something about Peter. The verse I just made mention. Go and tell the disciples, and Peter. Go and tell the disciples, and Peter. When Jesus was on trial before the religious council, Peter was in the courtyard denying him. He denied him so seriously that after he had done that, Jesus turned and looked at him, and he went and wept. Luke tells us that after Peter denied Jesus, the third time, the Lord looked straight at him. Something inside Peter broke, and he wept. And after he had wept, now you can imagine, he knew that Jesus was not going to do anything with him again. He has been disappointed. He has disappointed Jesus. He has done everything because he has seen, this is the man who was saying, I will die with you. Now, you can imagine what Peter would have thought after denying Jesus. But then the angel mentioned Peter's name and uh, he sent a message. I mean, when the angel sent a message to, 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 to them, he, you could imagine the woman saying, Peter, Jesus loves you. He said we should come and tell you that he is going to Galilee, that you should be there. He loves you. Oh, go. And so Peter took it up. Now, the happiness of Peter with the women's report was such that he changed. And this is good news for us. So, saints of the Lord, I want to tell you, very often, you stand here, everyone who comes to preach calls upon those who haven't accepted Christ. And no, nobody wants to come because you are afraid. Jesus, I mean, Peter was bold enough to speak against the others, I mean, the authorities of the day. Can't you just come one of these days? Remove all the fear. You have to do it in the public, whether you like it or not. You have to accept Jesus Christ in the public. So, if you are called today, and you are sitting there for five or six times, you come and they call you and you don't come. I want to tell you, if you don't do it, it's not going to be easy for you. Please take note of this and know that if you don't accept this, you are not going to have it easy. Jesus didn't give up on Peter, and he wouldn't give up on you. Hallelujah. Peter was radically changed by his repentant heart and the irrevocable forgiveness of God. You can be too. So please, brethren, I want you to know as I finish this message, like Peter, your story is not finished. And that God's forgiveness is irrevocable, intimate, and impactful. God gives you a second chance. It's not only a second chance. It could be a third chance. It could be a fourth chance. It could be a fiftieth chance. It could be a sixtieth chance. So take note of this and come to Jesus. When you are called today, come to Jesus. Amen. What shall we say to Elder William Thomas? Oh, hallelujah. I think we're having a good time. The, very, the solemnity of the service is what I've been praying for for today. That when you get hold of the gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus, it brings transformation. And so Jesus walking with this guys on the road to Emmaus entered into maybe their home because Jesus was pretending that he wanted to go. They said, no, come stay with us. And then he take charge. It doesn't happen in any culture. He takes bread, bless it. The Bible says he gave it to them. And then all of a sudden their eyes opened. I pray that the eyes of our understanding will open today. And so Paul said, this is the most important thing, the first thing that I, I received from the Lord, I'm telling you. So Paul is saying that when I got hold of Jesus, the most important message I had is that Jesus died. So he mentioned in 1 Corinthians, as we read, the most important message I have is that Jesus died. 
for our sins, not just any kind of death. And then he rose again on the third day. This is a good news, as he mentioned. Beloved, you have opportunity to run to Jesus and be saved. Peter was bold enough to deny him. Jesus was bold enough to send a message to him that I haven't given up on you. But the boldness of Jesus takes over and makes life better. The guy was so bold when he was denying Jesus. Sometimes we've been bold enough to deny Jesus this many years. And you see that things haven't changed, you know. You know when the mothers were talking and all that, they said, oh, we're forced to change. Has it changed today? So sometimes we have to carry the children on our backs, whichever way we can do to get them in. Sometimes we think that, yes, we, we're just doing anything. But the seed is being scattered in their spirit and in their heart. There is going to be a time, there's going to be a time. The Lord will rise up and reach out to them. But you are hearing clearly today. Clearly today. Clearly today. Clearly today. As I was mentioning, we're just praying as I'm talking. Please, in your spirit, understand what is going on. The strength of our youth might not be the same as the strength in our old age. No. Don't live and in the future regret that, oh no, I would have known the Lord and served him. Talking about Milton Keynes and all that, now I know. These are the elders who used to travel to Milton Keynes to speak unto us, to encourage us, to preach the gospel. When the church started, a few people in there. People of God, the gospel works. It's a good message. If you are here, you don't know Jesus. Our online family, if you don't know Jesus. What a great day, listening listen to all these testimonies and all that. I work as a chemist, as a pharmacist, and I know how it is when, when people are trying to give up, you know, trying to, you know, give up taking drugs and all that. You, 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 and then it will tell you how many years sometimes people will come for all these rehabilitations and all that and all that. But I have seen situations where people also receive Jesus and it just, in an instant, it just goes. Thank God mommy wasn't shy of it. Went to the beach. You can have a good time. While the Spirit of God is moving, you can have a good time of your own. He said, I left them there. And since, I've never touched them. 22 years. Who told you there's no power in the gospel? Beloved, why are you struggling? Give your life to Jesus. Online family, give your life to Jesus. He makes life better. He transforms transforms. It transforms. It transforms. I always say to people, things that's not just happened. So it was cold here. It didn't look beautiful. If it was like this or like that today, we didn't have any children. We didn't have our children here. They wouldn't come. No, 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 not this environment. But we had many women who stood, who knew the Lord, who loved the Lord. And they knew the God they are serving. Things have not just happened. Jesus died so that we may live. Are you here? You want to give your life to Jesus. Your denial of Jesus is in your spirit, boldly saying that I'm not, but He is telling you that I am boldly after you. The other man said, Go and tell Peter. I am after him. A great moment for you. Maybe humbly we'll be on our feet for the next two, three minutes because of our time. But let's be on our feet and just reflectively look. I wanted to achieve something today that we will see people who have known the Lord and they have never given up, they have never looked back and God has been faithful, the Lord has been with them, he has granted them strength that we can know and to testify that indeed the Lord is good. It is you now, maybe it's a moment that you are asking that God may become again, Lord, transform my life, I want to renew my heart, my commitment unto you, for there is going to be a time, there is going to be a time like this, where someone needs to hear of your testimony and give his life to Jesus. 
and give his life to Jesus. We want to make a rededication of your life unto the Lord. He want all things to be done according to his will in his perfect way. It is about Jesus and nothing else. About Jesus and nothing else. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, young one. You see, this thing we're talking about is no fantasy. It's not that like we don't have anything to talk about, but we are telling you that, yeah, don't look at it that you're being forced in, but I want you to understand that the message of the gospel, it works. It works. Bring joy and peace to the broken heart. Thank you, Lord. I need you, I need oh, I, 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 I need you, oh, bless me now, my Savior. chat with the Lord. Have a personal chat with the Lord. Have a personal chat with the Lord. The Lord, I need your transforming power to come. Jesus, come. Touch my life. Touch me once again. Touch me again. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me again. You rose that I may live. You died that I will have life. Thank you, Jesus. Rabasu Kabosha. And for those who listen to us on our online platform, dearly beloved, there is life in the house of the Lord. Our arms are open unto you. Run and rush in. Run like someone who's been chased out of something that you need a rescue or somebody to redeem you, somebody to hold you. Run to the presence of God. There's life in here. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. For many lives you are transforming and changing. Right from the time you died and rose into today, the gospel is saving many laws who are yielding unto you. We thank you that we have access to you, O oh God. You are the message of truth, Lord. We have access to you. Lord, we raise our allegiance unto you that we will hold only unto you, O oh God. Nothing out of you, Lord. Father, we thank you. I want to sincerely thank you again for our senior citizens, oh God, Father. The Lord will continue to keep them so that their lives, oh God, will reflect upon this generation that we have, oh God. Hold their faith together, oh God, never to give up, oh God, on you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that bless them, oh God, with good health, oh God. Bless them, oh God, Father, with strength, oh God, Father. Spiritual capacity, oh God, Father. Yes, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Let's sing this song to end our prayer. How sweet the name of Jesus is. Thank you. Lord. Name 
you again. Thank you for this atmosphere and this moment. We honor you, Lord, for you are God. You took our place and died for us. I will have life in you. Lord, let every life be evidence of your transforming power, Lord. Let your people live in you and enjoy all of you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Amen. 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 What shall we say to our elder emeritus, Thomas Williams? God, God bless, bless you. you so, so much. God bless you so much. He was a full elder, so when he retires, he becomes an emeritus. Um, let's prepare our hearts like um, elder asked us if we believe in all that we profess. Uh, let's bless the Lord with our substance. It's time to give to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please shall we humbly rise. We will follow him together wherever he may lead beside the living waters our soul see the feet whatever be the conflict he'll meet our every need we will follow him together Wherever he we will follow, we will follow him together. Wherever he may we will follow, we will follow him together. Wherever he may lead, beside the living water, our souls in whatever, whatever be their conflict. Meet our every need. We will follow him together. Wherever we will follow, we will follow him together. Wherever he may Jesus, you are my solid rock. Jesus, you are my hiding place. I proclaim your greatness to the world. Sing it, Jesus. Jesus, you are my solid rock. Jesus, you are 
Jesus, you are my hiding place. I proclaim your greatness to the world. Should I roll? Should I roll? And praise your name. Should I bow? And praise your name. I proclaim your greatness to the world. Should I roll? Should I roll? And praise your name. Should I bow? And praise your name. I proclaim your greatness to the world. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are my song. Jesus, I proclaim, I proclaim your greatness to the world. Sing it, Jesus. Jesus, you are my soul and wrong. Jesus, you are my hiding place. I proclaim your greatness to the world. Should I roll? Should I roll? And praise your name. Should I bow? And praise your name. I proclaim your greatness. Should I roll? Should I roll? Should I roll? And praise your name. Should I bow? And praise your name. I proclaim your greatness. Should I bow? Sing it, Jesus. You are my soul and rock. Jesus, you are my hiding place. I proclaim your name to the world, to the world. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you are my soul and rock. Jesus, you are my hiding place. I proclaim your name. So you and I will praise the 
the Lord. You and I will praise Him. You and I, 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 you and I will praise Him. You and I, you and I.
Our seniors, when they set off in the morning, it's up to the evening. And it's a challenge to us. I want, I want you to just look at your ways. Just, just let us look in deep into our hearts. Because they've done it and then left us something. Although they are still with us, helping us. But they've left us something. What I want us to ask ourselves is, what are we leaving for our children? What is our children seeing? What are we showing to our children? Elder Williams is a teacher, so he would have asked questions and asked for responses. But um, I don't have that privilege, so when he comes back, he will tell us the rest. Amen. Uh, announcements, please. generations thrive. Thank you for joining us today, especially if this is your first time. We hope that you enjoy the service. Here are some key announcements for you to take note of. The focus for the month of April is Belt of Truth. We have our usual weekly activities starting with our district's morning devotion, Begin With Jesus, which occurs every Monday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Zoom. We have a prayer surgery on Wednesday, prayer tower on Thursday, with Jericho Hour and youth service taking place on Friday. There will be a water baptism service on Saturday the 30th of April from 8am in this auditorium. Kindly contact your group leader or our presiding elder for further details. Our various district's ministry meetings will occur this month, starting with women's ministry on the 12th, PEMM on the 19th, and evangelism meeting on the 26th from 7 p.m. Further details pertaining to these meetings will be shared across our various platforms. As we continue our yearly read through the Bible exercise, let us all endeavor to take part in this. As we commence this week, let us remember to pray for five different people as we continue to intercede for our brothers and sisters. If you celebrated your birthday this week up until today, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. We thank God for your life and how far he has brought you. We pray that he will continue to bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he be gracious towards you. Have a wonderful and blessed birthday. In Jesus' name, amen. announced if any member cannot see their spouse or children on their ch meeting profile please contact elder joe minta with their names and this will be set up please remember to log in and check in for this service if you do not have your login details please inform your group leader that is the end of today's announcements but please do visit our website piwcfgt.org where all the events for the month are also captured. And don't forget to subscribe to and follow us on all our social media platforms on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram with the handle at PIWCFGT. Thank you for listening. See you again next week. And until then, may God bless you and have a wonderful week. Thank you very much, our media team. God bless you so much. And so thank you. And
We're bringing our service to a close. What a beautiful day we've had, and I am so blessed, and I'm challenged as well to live my life well and to serve God very well. But there's going to be a time that I will also stand here like this, and I pray that my life would have made an impact in the life of others. And so as senior citizens, we want to say that we, we cherish you so much. We need you around all time. And now in times of their retirement and all that, their greatest work is laboring in prayer for the church. I want to thank you so much for your faith in the Lord, serving God um, to this moment. And so please, let's take this one few and let's go home shortly. It's been a great day. You know, when we do with our seniors, it's always beautiful to have enough time for them. And today we've enjoyed that. But visiting us for the first time, we have our dear brother, Nana Kwame and wife, and they have a child as well who are here with us. Please, let's see you where you are, and let's welcome you. Oh, God bless you. Please, those around them, show them some, you know, fountain gate welcoming. Let them know, Nana Kwame and wife, God bless you. And so after church, please, let's interact and to know you more. God bless you. So on Sunday, come in. It's our Lord's Supper Sunday. Please, 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 let's spend some time. It's a good thing to do as a child of God every week, do some time to fast and to pray. And as we prepare ourselves for our Lord's Supper on Sunday as well. And then on Sunday, we will take that opportunity to meet all our new joiners um, since January to now, to have a fellowship with them um, after service in the youth room. And so we need a media team as well to help us to capture some few shots and so that we will celebrate you know, their, their existence here with us. Please, let's take note of that. Fantastic. God bless you so much. And please, the youth conference is just around the corner. I want to plead with every parent, do your best for us to tidy up the list that we're submitting to the headquarters or the national office. Like we mentioned to you, the church is sponsoring £100 each for every um, young person going. And so please, please um, do your best to um, finalize the payment. Um, and I want to do the pressure so that we know the amount we are forwarding to the youth um, account as soon as possible. Please help us with that. And I think the young ladies' event has already been shown on the please. Mothers, let's encourage our young ladies to join this particular event. Very important. It is all geared preparing them for future life. You know, their marriage, how they manage themselves and all that. This let's do, and it's going to be a very good session as well. Very good. In the month of May, um, the National has brought a little change in the action plan. So in the month of May, we're going to have a PRWC Holy Ghost convention or conference um, from the 19th all the way to the 21st of May. Um, so let's take note, we'll get the flyers out soon, and prepare ourselves to drink of the Holy Spirit, as Mami Riley says. So... Um, God bless you so much. And as we rightly said, we're trying to bring Bible study into in-house now. Now that all the marks are kind of going, and the Lord has been good to us. And so we want to bring Bible study in-house now from the second Sunday of May. The second Sunday of May. We want to plead that Bible study is part of church service. So don't take yourself from open prayer and all that. Let's do our best. And I'll quickly mention something that's really stuck with me today. That in times like this, we need more of the word of God. So please, what we're going to do is that from that day, when we come in, everybody will walk in straight into your group settings or group setup. And so the open prayer of about 10 minutes will just be done, or 5, 10 minutes, whilst we are sitting in our various groups. And as soon as we finish with just the open prayer, we will start off with the Bible study, studying it and see how we are all kind of engaging, and then we'll finish it beautifully, do some praises there, do some little bit of worship, possibly, and then we'll hear God's word. Please, please, I want to plead with you that we need to ensure that we have maximum participation within Bible study. It's very important for our growth. And the way the Bible study is structured, in fact, it is all even going to be good with our children, all of us sitting together and also interacting alongside the manual they're giving us. So we'll give you further details maybe next week, sake of time, so we can finish up and go home. I think I've mentioned everything. 
And then on Saturday, we have a baptism service going on 8 a.m. Please, if you know anyone uh, who needs baptism, please sign post them to beside another group leader. And so that on Saturday, we'll have this service here. Come and support. If you have kids who are getting baptized, parents, come around and support them as we do that um, together. God bless you. And I want to really say this as well. Really, God bless our children as well. You know, so far, you know, we're talking about their contribution or their free will giving and towards the refurbishment of the mission house. And the last time I checked, I think we, they've so far raised about 2,800 pounds. That's just from the children. And I felt that this is amazing. This is, this is awesome. This is really good. So parents, um, have the conversation. It's, you are not compelled to, but have the conversation. That we want the children to own the church and um, to grow in the church, be part of it. Tell them, this is what we're doing. The money that I have for you, what do you think? I want to pass some, or what do you think? How much do you think we can give towards your contribution um, for refurbishing of the mission house? And if they respond, yes, do it. And I believe that God will bless them for that. And so when I, when I got the figure, I was like, wow, this is really good. I mean, really, there have been times where adults, we are taking offering, we talk and talk and talk, and sometimes it will come 500, 800, 700. And the children, with a little conversation parents are having with them, so then 2,800 already, and they're still coming in. And I'm trusting God that they will hit the 5,000 mark, and definitely it will happen. And to the glory of God. So God bless you so much. And for the mothers, fathers, Sunday school teachers, I want to say God bless you for that. But today, finally, I really want us to make a very intentional prayer for our media team. See, the world that we are in now, the media is becoming the arm of the church in a way to get the gospel out. This dawn, I was just praying for them for a reason. Not a video that we just watched. There's a lot of effort in that goes in putting it together, right? A lot of files and joining them together. And so I was waiting up to like 12 midnight. It hasn't dropped into my inbox yet. I said, Whoa, what are we going to do? And then the Kimbrai sent a message that it just needed to pop out because of an emergency. And so I slept off. Then I woke up at 5, and I realized that he sent it around 1 a.m. And then I, I viewed it around that time, put my comment in, and then all that. But what I'm trying to say is that a lot of effort going. And so parents, when we see our young ones like that, cherish it in your heart that they are doing a great job for the Lord. And so I want us to really say a prayer for them that the Lord will, will sharpen their skills still and bless them immensely. If you want to have beautiful service, it takes people who have grace and love the Lord to deliver like that. It was awesome putting this together. And I've, yesterday I watched it at dawn, or this morning at dawn, and just as mommy was sharing it, I was having it as well in my bed. I was like, wow, look at what they're putting together for our youth. And so we're going to be sharing it on our social media platform. Anyone who will chance on it, maybe in future, the Lord will use this medium to touch their heart. So family, shall we be on our feet humbly? And I just want us to, you know, from the bottom of our heart, I want us to begin to pray briefly for our media team, for the awesome work that they are doing for God's kingdom. Pray that the Lord will endow them with grace, wisdom, knowledge, open bigger opportunities for them. And I want to pray that even for the young ones I'm on, when they mention anywhere in their colleges, in their university application, whatever, job application, and they say they are part of the Church of Pentecost media team, may grace find them. I'm, I'm serious about this because I believe that no one does anything in the house of God for God to shut his mouth and his eye. The first. Please, let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. The skill involved, we cannot afford to hire and to pay. But I am really saying that when we understand and we lift up a cry unto God, God will bless them immensely that they sleep, they wake up, and they are thinking about media, media, media in the church, and so that the gospel will go far and near. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. In the name of Jesus, pray for them. 
Lebakosoba hatayundia. Reba bakabo sibirie kabo shatande. Father, we pray for these young ones, O oh God. Lord, we pray for the media team, O oh God. We want to pray that you endow them, O oh God, Father, with special grace and unction, O oh God. Father, anoint, O oh God, Father, their hands, their feet, their body, every part of them, O oh God. Cause them, O oh God, to continue to be relevant, O oh God, to the kingdom business, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And cause, O oh God, Father, them never to lack anything good, O oh Lord, we pray. Father, bless them for us, O oh God. Bless them for us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. We want to give you all the praise, Lord. We want to give you all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And please, let's lift up our hands as we take up the benediction and prepare home. And I'm in the Lord of all grace, the giver of life. May he bless you. May he cause his hand to rest upon your life. May the power of the Lord come upon you. May the Lord anoint you to stand strong and never to be weary. May the power of the gospel continue to hold you. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be your portion now. In Jesus' name, shall we go home in peace. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. See you on Friday, please. Friday.